Oh, crikey. This lockdown is not doing me any favours. My hair. I need a haircut. Anyway. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wine Witter. Uh, this episode today, we're concentrating on the Rhone uh, Valley, the Rhone region in the southeastern part of France. Um, so just very quickly, why? I mean, it's one of my absolute favourite uh, winemaking areas in the world. Um, I've actually been on holiday there and done some work there, uh, some singing work that is nothing in, in viticulture, uh, for the past over a decade, um, if not once, I go twice a year uh, with friends and family. It's just a beautiful place, never mind the wine. Uh, yeah, it's an excellent holiday destination. You know, if you're thinking about somewhere to go for a real chill time for a few days to a week, I mean, I'd highly recommend the villages around the Southern Rhone or uh, just south of uh, Lyon. Uh, and Yen in, in the northern part of the Rhone. But anyway, anyway, on, on to wine. Um, there are some spectacular wines coming out of this region for centuries and generations. And most of these uh, Appellation and uh, companies that, that produce wine there have been in the same families for generations after generations after generations. So the knowledge uh, of winemaking there is it's it's incredible you know it, it, it's what they do it's the very fiber of the whole place it, it's 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 whole existence um, so what I wanted to do was show you on a map and and talk about the different cru that's a terrible pronunciation cru uh, uh, so cru status is, is something you get, you know, it's a, it's a mark of excellence within a region. And then some of the appellations in general and how they relate to each other, where they're situated. Uh, some of the really beautiful villages uh, that you can visit there. And also, you know, things like uh, the, the grape varieties. Um, that they use. So, the Southern Rhone is my expertise more. Um, I've never actually been to the Northern Rhone, um, so I know I've had extremely well-crafted, elegant, full-flavoured wines from the northern part of the Rhone, um, so I've it, only whites, but my god, they're absolutely incredible. They're also very expensive, so uh, they were gifts, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm talking regions like Saint-Joseph, some of the white wine you get out of Saint-Joseph is just amazing. Um, and Condrio uh, is another, another appellation that, I, that I've had and they are phenomenal. But as I say, like the Southern Rhone is where I actually go every year. And when I go, I, I stay in a small village uh, called Buisson which is, you know, a few miles away from uh, very, very classy winemaking uh, villages like Ségure and Sable. So some of these villages you may have seen on bottles of wines that you've had in restaurants. I mean, it is an area of winemaking that restaurateurs will put on their, their wine lists uh, without doubt. And so I, if I just rattle off a few, you've got things like Rasto, Gigondas, Vaquiras, Sable, Segure, Plein de Dieu, Keran, uh, 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 but the king of them all that, you know, is, is known worldwide without a doubt is Chateau de Dupac. Um, I really concentrated as I said it there. <laughs> uh, really well known for its, its full flavoured, elegant, structured wines. Um, and if you actually visit a very small part of the world in terms of the actual village of Chateau Neuf du Pape, because it's basically buildings and 
produces warehouses and winemaking facilities with a few cafes and things uh, which are built on the edge of a huge area of vines and uh, the actual ruin of Chateau Neuf du Pape, the, the, the castle itself. So what I thought we'd do is uh, have a quick look at this map. Here it is. Bing! And I'll take you through some of the villages and you know, I can, I can tell you a little bit about them and then we'll get on to the wine. So, very quickly as I mentioned, uh, the Vallée du Rhône is obviously, you know, the, uh, a large portion of the, of the Rhône River, this entire um, region that we're talking about. And it is split into two. So in the north, northern Rhône, you, I mentioned Saint-Joseph, and then uh, further north there you have Condrio, and these are all just situated be uh, below Vienne. Uh, also, you know, Cotrotti, Croze Hermitage, you know, I've had Croze Hermitage and Hermitage, terrific winemaking. Um, and then as you go to the south of the Rhone, we're talking about the village and appellations, appellation surrounding, well, north of Avignon, really. So, um, places I've been which are superb and also gone there for the purpose of, of tasting wine, you know, like these are the places if you want really good wines that you should go and visit. And I'll, I'll show you some examples in, in just a second. But you have places to the east where there's a huge, uh, a huge block of, of really top winemaking places. So it's so a Vaison La Romaine, Roix, uh, Segure, as I've mentioned, Sable, Gigondas between the two, Vacaras, Baume de Venise is known for its uh, Vin Doux Naturel. Uh, so sweet wines, um, one of the finest uh, sweet wines, dessert wines, uh, uh, is, is, ma is made by a company in Baume de Venise, whose name I forget actually, but uh, if sweet wine is what you're after, it's certainly a place. And then further uh, south of that, just to the west, you've got Chateau Neuf du Pape, as I've said, huge, huge, huge um, production, uh, hundreds and thousands, if not millions of bottles every, every year. And then further south of Chateau Neuf du Pape, you have Avignon, and to the east, the uh, small kind of, I guess it's town, it's a town, Carpentras. Uh, we've definitely one excellent restaurant, uh, which I'll talk about in future videos. And then Mont Ventoux, uh, which is an absolutely, it's a huge mountain. It's, it's, it, it, it kind of, you know, dwarfs the entire landscape. You can see it no matter where you are. Yeah, definitely worth a climb driven up there don't walk it that'll take days uh, driven up there and if you if you drive to the top you know you get a tremendous view of the the valley to the west and then you know the Alps to the east there's other villages up to the north that are superb winemaking places like Rasto, Vin Sobre, Queran I'm a big fan of Queran, Rasto I'm a huge fan of Rasto uh, very very what I call nyangi wines aggressive um, and then, yeah, over the west is uh, are places like Lirac uh, and Tavel. Some of these villages have what's called cru status. Rasto, Queran, Gigondas, Vacaras, Baume de Venise, Chateau Neuf du Pape, and Lirac. So hopefully that map gives you a better idea in terms of the geography of all the, all the villages. In the Southern Rhone, they're so close together, honestly, like all of these places are 10 minutes drive from each other, 10 to 15 minutes drive. And as you're driving through these from place to place, you're just driving through the most spectacular scenery. You know, there's vines everywhere, the sun is shining. You have Les Dentelles, which is a, uh, a mountain formation uh, on, on, you know, as you drive through uh, from Segure to Gigondas and Sable, there's, there's, and, and Mont Ventoux is in the background. It, it's just a really, really chilled, beautiful place to venture. So a little bit about the grapes that are grown there. Uh, so mainly it's kind of Syrah, Grenache, Roussin, uh, ooh, Mouvedre. They're kind of the main grapes that are used uh, and cultivated to to generate this 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 southern Rome uh, flavor. So obviously now for the fun part, it's it's a wine video. Couldn't do a wine video without demonstrating some examples. Uh, so these wines I'm going to show you are, are wines that I've had before, 
and some of them have been on the shelf for a long time, some of them are newer vintages because I've drunk the older vintages because they've reached a uh, the good enough stage of maturity for drinking. Um, I'll also comment on you know where you can buy them and where I bought them, for example. Okay. So starting with a Segure wine. This is so obviously Segure is one of the Cotiron village, as you can see on the bottle printed there. This particular wine is made by a company called Domaine de Mourchon, who is at, who are actually run by a Scottish family um, who moved there oh, two generations ago, uh, I think, and they make, in my opinion, some of the finest Segure. Uh, and also their white wine and rosé, Loubier is their, their rosé that they do. They, they do a white called La Source, but they're some of the best winemakers in the area. And so now for the fun part for me. It's got dusty. I've got a wet piece of paper. Here we go. Oh. There's a few of them to go. So, there you are. So year in, year out, Domaine de Morchamp continually produce well-structured, deep-flavoured, uh, reliable wine that is, as I say, some of the best in the region. This is their Domaine, uh, this is their Grand Reserve 2013 and it's mainly a uh, Syrah and Grenache blend. Um, so the flavours you get out of their Grand Reserve is a much more complex black fruits, cherries, um, slightly herby Provençal herbs, of course, because they grow in the area. That's that, that sort of flavour is comes out of the terroir, and there's really well balanced, uh, good tannins. Uh, and actually, their Grand Reserve. The reason I buy their Grand Reserve is because it matures really well. Uh, their base red, as you could call it, is called Tradition, which actually um, is phenomenal. Uh, Tradition is much cheaper because it's, it's what they call their base wine, uh, their base red. Um, but actually, it's it's continuously delicious every, every time I buy it. Um, a real steal, actually. Like it's it's cheap. Uh, their Grand Reserve goes for something in the region of, I think it's sixteen pounds or something like that. Uh, I can't remember. But yeah, a terrific wine. And on all of these that I show you, there'll be tastings eventually of them. But yeah, not ready to drink that one. It's good. Good story though. I did go on holiday for my 30th birthday with some friends and I said we've got to go to Domaine de Morchamp. So we went and we told them, the guy recognised my face because I, you know, I'm constant there every year. Um, and I don't know why I think we got onto what we were doing and we said, oh, we're, we're singers, the singing season's over so we'll come on holiday. And he went, oh, well we want to try and do some concerts here. Um, and so we went down to their, their area where they have their huge steel vats where they store their wine. Um, and yeah, sang a few arias and then as a thank you they gave us a... Uh, what's the word? A magnum of their Grand Reserve for, uh, just on the house. So that was, that was delightful. Anyway, moving on. So this next wine is a Rasto and it's called La Ponce and it's by Domaine des Escarvées their beetle emblem there as you can see. So this is my favourite bit again, wet cloth, here we go. Oh! Down again. La Ponce Rasto, this is a 15% 2015. Now I love Rasto. Rasto is one of my favourite uh, appellation in the region. It's just so that's literally what it is. Uh, again, it's it's predominantly Grenache with a little bit of Syrah. Syrah, even. Let's try it. Syrah, very English accent. Um, and just the depth and complexity that Rasto gets after five to ten years of maturing is, is like none other. It, 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 if you drink it young, it has that kind of uh, aggressive tannins, good acidity, um, but full of fruit, like full of, 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 of dark fruits and cherries. 
Um, but if you leave it alone, it just the complexity of the wine evolves and it becomes something truly magnificent. Like it, it is one of my favourite. Uh, so yeah, uh, Rasto uh, is quite small. Um, in fact, it's pretty tiny <clears throat> as a place. There's not much to see, so if you're going there, you're going there to taste wines. I would highly recommend visiting this domain. Uh, Escarave has a beautiful uh, little site that you walk into when you taste your wines. Um, actually, I've just remembered actually when you have them young as well. Uh, Escarave's wines, certainly their 2012, 13, <coughs> 14, 15, they all had quite a little uh, toffee taste as well. It's kind of burnt toffee. So a, a sweetness as well, it has to it, I just remembered. Um, but yeah, the, the views from the Domaine are absolutely beautiful. Where else should you go? Go to Domaine La Soumade, uh, which is run by a, a really cool old man who supports uh, Barcelona. I'm not sure if he is Spanish, but I mean, he speaks French and sounds French to me. But they also have tremendous wines and uh, their view from the... Uh, the site is 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 one of the most vast views. You you, you get a real appreciation for the valley um, from Domen La Soumade. But there we go, Rasto. Moving on. So this next wine, Cuvée du Vatican, are a family-owned business uh, in the Rhone Valley, the Difonti family, and they've been at it for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, literally. It is a true family-owned company. Uh, so here is just their Côte du Rhône, their Réserve de l'Abbé, and it's their, oh, let's try it in French, 2018, uh, 2018. Um, this is a real steal if you're looking for a cheap, affordable wine. This goes for 10, 11 quid, sometimes nine pounds, and I'm trying to think where I bought it last. I think Lathwaite's certainly sell it you could have a look on there but have a look on winesearcher.com i'm sure there are many places that are stocking uh, cuvee du vatican's wines um so this is a grenache blend again and um it's it's mostly grenache and a tiny bit of syrah again very typical of the area so this is a cote du Rhone, which is just kind of uh, a way of making a general region wine wine of the region um cuvee du vatican Oh, I can't actually remember where they're located, exactly one of their sites. They have a site in Chateau Neuf du Pape where they make Chateau 16, uh, which is another chateau they own, um, where they make their Chateau Neuf du Pape. But I, I don't know if they produce this there on that site. Um, but this is delicious. Uh, this, this really uh, is, is a good, solid example of a Côte du Rhône that you can drink any time really it does well in it does well with time in the bottle you can drink it young and the flavors that you get from it are sort of um cherries a uh, uh, plum jam type thing but it has a real depth to it there's also a sign of tobacco -iness that comes out of it and those provencal herb notes you really get again and i mean it, it's good with, with meat dishes uh things with a, that are gonna be very herby because obviously in so, so provencal herb herbs grow in the wild in in the Rhone Valley along with olive trees so that really comes through in the terroir so if you're matching it with something where you're using a lot of kind of Provencal herbs uh, it, it's a real winner but yeah I mean it's cheap it's really affordable have a look on Lathwaite's first of all um, yeah really good if you want to get a case of six on the cheap yeah highly recommend so this next wine is the first of uh, three Chateau Neuf du Paps I'm going to put up. So this one is made at the Chateau 16 site. So this is again another wine by the Defonti family, uh, Cuvée du Vatican company, and this is their Chateau 16, Chateau Neuf du Pape, and this is their 2014, uh, 2014 wine. And as you can see on the bottle, it won the Médaille d'Or in Paris in 2016. Um, they really know what they're doing, the Defonti family. They are very traditional methods uh, for growing wine and again it's uh, Syrah and Grenache there might even be a little bit of something else in this bottle uh, so this wine is 15% so quite quite um, quite high uh, you'll feel it <laughs> uh, but it um, 
again has great flavor, great depth, it's very sophisticated and this is an example of what we call a, a, an old style Chateau Neuf. It's a very traditional um, kind of spices, huge complexity in the flavor. There's a lot of uh, nouveau Chateau Neuf du Pape styles that have a bit more smoothness, a bit more sweetness in style, but rim still have that complexity and flavor that you get from the vines that grow in Chateau Neuf. But yeah, Chateau 16, this isn't cheap. Um, I can't remember the price, as I said, it's a 2014. I think I got it easily four or five years ago. But once you start, you know, Chateau Neuf du Pape is a worldwide label, you know, it's a worldwide stamp of, of quality. Trust me, there are some poor ass Chateau Neuf du Pape makers, but then there are some world-class Chateau Neuf du Pape uh, makers. And, and some of it mainly is just to do with age of vines. Like, if a company has is, is, is unfortunately reached a time where their vines have gotten too old and they have to dig them up and plant some new ones, like, the complexity just isn't going to be there. Um, and other things are just, you know, winemaker's knowledge. Uh, generally in Chateau Neuf du Pape, though, the quality is quite high because there's no point in starting the business there because the, co the competition you're facing is just you know world class most of the time but Chateau 16 very very good um, this uh, this will pack a punch um, and I, I think Chateau 16 uh, 2014 got quite solid 90 to 92 reviews um, so I'd recommend that moving on the second Chateau Neuf is by a company called Domaine du Banneret and it's there 2011 Got the cloth again, here I go. Very dusty. Oh yeah, yeah, love that. Um, so, the 2011 by Domaine du Banneret. Banneret are actually the smallest uh, producer uh, in terms of site size, they're, they're in terms of hectares owned uh, on their vines. They are tiny, so their, their annual um, their annual yield is is quite low, so the best way to get a bottle of it is either pay a lot of money or go there, which is what I did. And they are tiny, and it sells uh, quite expensive. Like I think this is about thirty pounds. You know, um, this is a 2011, so this will be ready to drink quite soon. I think um, these are the things with with. Uh, uh, old style Chateau Neufs as well. You can keep them for a long time and the complexity will change over the course of 10 to 15 years. I don't think I'll keep this longer than 15 years, so I think I'll probably drink it by 26, latest, 2026. But yeah, uh, tiny maker in Chateau Neuf du Pape, but my God, like, one of the best, one of the best by far. So, Domaine du Banneret. Moving on. Chateau La Neurte. Here's their Chateau Neuf du Pape. 2013. Give it the old dust, then I'll uh, get to you guys. Right, we're done with the cloth. Drop that. This. Oh my god! Chateau Lenert are probably. Uh, there's a lot, but I'm going to say it. Are probably my favorite Chateau Neuf producer. Um, don't really know a lot about them, been there. The site is palatial, like huge long driveway with the whole Provencal trees either side of a road, you know, going up evenly. But, you know, the site, they always have um, an extremely attractive secretary, like always, and it changes every year as far as I can tell. But, no, that's not true. Um, but they ooze classiness like they are one of the best winemakers in the region if not the best in my opinion um old style again i do have some new style i'm trying to think whose i have de men de Morchamp make a chateau neuf du pape company based in segure but they take grapes grapes that they have uh, cultivated from the chateau neuf area bring them over to their site which is why they're able to make a chateau neuf the uh, Mende de Mourchon's uh, Chateau Neuf is very much nouveau style, uh, much more fruity, uh, suave in taste. It, it's uh, it's really delicious, actually. Um, you, you you'll like both styles if you start tasting them. Chateau Neuf will cost you some money, 
But Chateau Lenert, old style in terms of uh, the style of the wine, really, really classy. The flavours and depth and textures and the journey that it takes from the front of your mouth as you pass it over the palate, the longevity of the wine, this stuff is amazing and it costs amazing. I think uh, I probably bought this bottle for around the 28 to 35 pound mark and the older the years generally they'll keep their really good years like they can be 50 pounds a bottle, 65 pounds a bottle if you're buying things as far back as 2000 but I got a 13, I also have a 15, uh, I think I have two 15s. Um, this stuff I'm looking forward to just keeping, putting away for a while, a while, you know, several years from now. Um, and then just letting that complexity open out in a carafe for six to eight hours and then tucking into the... Mm. Chateau Lenert, palatial site, expert winemakers, whoever they are, I don't know. I mean, look them up. Yeah, they're good. I can, I'm just, this is just a brief introduction to companies. Uh, wines of huge complexity. Um, I'll read you what the, the bottle on the, at the back of this bottle says. Chateau Lenert has been handcrafting fine wines since 1561, making the property of one of the oldest, making the property one, bleh, let's try that again. Making the property Oh, it's because it's written wrong in the translation. One of the oldest producers in Chateau Neuf du Pape. We cultivate the traditional 13 varietals, including Grenache, Syrah, Mouverde, and saint compromising this intense uh, red blend, giving birth to a medium-bodied, fruity, and spicy red Chateau Neuf du Pape with an extraordinary aging potential. And they're not wrong. And also they're very good at balancing their wine. So this one's 14%, whereas the Chateau 16, their Chateau Neuf du Pape, as we saw earlier, their 14 was a 15% wine. Um, so there's a brief introduction to the re some, some regions and some products of the Southern Rhone Valley. Do like and subscribe the video, guys. I'm having the best time making these videos. So uh, yeah, I want it to be something that continues. And yeah, tell your friends if, if you're enjoying it, please comment, please comment and hit that like button uh, and do subscribe as I say. So I'll see you in the next video. See ya.